You know, I've got to admit, as somebody who really likes the Deus Ex games, I was pretty sad when I heard that Eidos Montreal was going into the Avengers mines, because didn't really feel great about it. We had good reason to worry with the Avengers game. But it actually seems that they have done a really, really good job. And today, I think, not to the same degree, but we do have Star Wars Jedi Fallen Order-like situation. A game that basically knows what it is, is content enough to stay in its lane, and just execute what it wants to do for its target audience well. This is even something we recently talked about with Age of Empires 4. And it's a trend we just do seem to be seeing a little bit more in gaming these days, which is so bloody nice given what we've been used to. So let's just do a quick look at the reviews here. So on the Metacritic, it's a 77. That's only based on seven reviews, though. So, you know, generally positive. Um, there's a reason for it being a bit lower, though. But if you actually look at the essential, well, the essential bits of the game, look at Polygon. One of the more emotionally resonant video game stories in recent memory. And something as well um, that I learned from Skill Up's review is, you know, rather than being the kind of weird costume Avengers in the Avengers game, like these kind of still are that visually speaking, um, but tonally they're all like fairly close to the James Gunn interpretations of these characters. So I think that just means that the MCU fans will probably feel quite at home uh, with these characters and won't feel, you know, won't feel like too jarred by it in a way they maybe did with the Avengers game. Now for PC Gamer, this is actually great where they say, you know, it's a charming, heartwarming game. The combat I generally hear is really quite good, marred by technical issues. This could explain some of our problems here, and that could mean that this game is something to wait for a purchase on. Um, Unfortunately, I can't say that's super surprising. I do remember how Deus Ex Mankind Divided was at its launch. It also did have uh, technical issues. So maybe that's something to be polished up in future Eidos <laughs> Montreal uh, releases. But as they say here, you know, the game is fr frequently fr fragrantly broken. This makes Guardians of the Galaxy a difficult game to recommend right now. Something clearly went awry during development because it's weird for a single-player linear game to have so many bizarre performance issues. That's not good. <laughs> um, so basically, it, it seems like with Fallen Order, you know, uh, Luke here would have been happy enough to recommend Fallen Order, even though it had a few issues. This just doesn't seem like it's quite as good a game as Fallen Order, but it still is very good. But the issues really do make it a bit rough, so you might want to wait. Yeah, I mean, I think if you're putting it in the same boat, even conceptually as Jedi Fallen Order, then you know Eidos Montreal are on to a win because they've went, here's a franchise. Here's something we've done in the franchise that people like. Please enjoy. We haven't, you know, we haven't tried to scam you out of all your money, like a big MTX-driven game or anything like that. We've just went, would you like a single-player linear experience in the franchise world that you you like or love, whatever? Like, yes, actually. That sounds good. Can I have more of that? Yeah, yeah. Um, okay, so if we talk about, um, you know, IGN, like, once more basically just saying like, hey, you know that Avengers campaign that was really good and then the rest of Avengers was was basically a big suck. They've, you know, they've doubled down on the bit that was good, the campaign bit. So that is essentially what we're overall hearing. Combat is very good. Character work is very good. Technical issues do exist. Level design doesn't seem to be the most inspired thing in the universe. Puzzles are a bit old hat. But overall, it's a very high quality, from what I understand from skill up, 15 to 20 hours of Guardians of the Galaxy. If you want a, a, a narrative single-player action adventure, that is what this is. Yeah, no, I've, I've heard some incredible things about the, how they've done that as well in terms of choice and how that's implemented. So I think it, no, no one's really had, uh, talked about it in these like snippets of reviews, but it's the idea of actually p taking some form of charge of this. It, I've seen people say it's reminiscent of a lot of what Telltale did really well. When you're making choices quite obviously in dialogue, you're literally saying, okay, well... I'm going to choose to say A or choose to say B and I have to intuit what the character I'm speaking to will react to and then the game will overtly say they'll remember or they weren't happy about that. But I've also seen someone say that I can't remember which review it was but there's segments of the game where you make a choice but it's a literal gameplay choice. It's not you're presented with choices. It's literally, you know, something is happening and if you go follow one character or if you go help another character then that is literally like a narrative yeah. and like a narrative and gameplay choice that feels natural 
but it's like that stuff's fairly rare in games as yeah, far as I can tell. I remember one of those being decently well done. I shit you not. By Call of Duty Advanced Warfare. Oh dear. <laughs> where I think the character is called Gideon. Mm. And if you drive your car through like a little fiery thing, Gideon gets burnt and he has mm. that burn for the rest of the game. Mm. And it was just one of those weird things where I was like, whoa, whoa. Well, <laughs> I didn't expect this. <laughs> what have they done? Mm. Um, I, I really like it when they, they do that in a more, I suppose, a diegetic or you know, natural feeling, um, natural feeling manner. Yep. So overall here, this is a game with no multiplayer, no currencies, no microtransactions. It's a group of characters, solid narrative, some good action. If you look at the Avengers, you know, it, it got most of those things wrong outside of the Kamala Khan storyline, which people did like. Now, with that said, from what I do understand, the game has had a little bit of a boon with, uh, it's had obviously re for reasons for criticism with the microtransactions, it has had a boon with Game Pass, um, from what I understand as well, um, I mean, this is why it caught my eye, Christopher Judge is uh, Black Panther, uh, Kratos, most of you will know, and for the real connoisseurs, Tilk yep. in, uh, in Stargate. Uh, I like Christopher Judge. So that's like a neat little thing. And it seems like through some of their DLCs, they are trying to lean more into the narrative side of it, which would certainly be good because the rest of it, not good. I mean, it's, it's a loot game with terrible loot <laughs> and, a, and a loop that doesn't work. <laughs> yeah. Why have they done this? And I think this game uh, just perfectly shows how you can take a core idea you can try to turn it into a 1,000, 2,000 hour game, a big live service, and you can completely screw the pooch on it. Or you could just do a project that is basically fucking reasonable <laughs> and actually do well. And I think that's the thing. When all those business interests and and things come in, you, you end up, I guess, with these situations where the gameplay can't be, or the, the playtime can't be driven by content. The playtime has to be driven by systems. And it's very hard to get those long-term systems right. I mean, you've got Destiny that's been spending what, you know, soon enough, Destiny will have spent 50 years trying to make compelling systems. <laughs> uh, you know, this is something that so few games, like Destiny probably does it right enough. You know, you've got World of Warcraft trying to do it every freaking way you can possibly imagine recently. It's like all of these games are trying to do this stuff. And I have to imagine that that really just makes it hard to focus on making a lot of content and doing a really good job of polishing all of that content. Um, and I do just wonder if really this is more the direction we want games to be going in. I mean, certainly, I think that it's very easy to hijack the goopy gamer brain, hijack the numbers, hijack how our, our minds actually work, and basically trick us into playing a thousand hour game that's maybe got like 50 quality hours in it, and it's just the sort of thing, you know, there's a bunch of games you could play them for 500 hours, but if you played 10 games of the caliber of this, or Star Wars Jedi Fallen Order, or Devil May Cry 5, I mean, you would have such more of a rich gaming experience. I know it's real bloody rich coming from us who have our roots in the MMORPG genre, but you guys know what I mean, right? This does serve, seem like it maybe doesn't serve the business interests ideally, but it probably serves the greater good of the customer's enjoyment, general enrichment of their life through media. Yeah, and I mean, I think uh, this is the blueprint for Square Enix in the West going forward, generally speaking, because the Avengers was the most massive failure of all time in terms of like how they handle stuff in the West. Like they've scuffed things before, but that was really bad. And I think like the fact that they were completely happy to push this forward, monitor, like, you know, green light it, have it go. I think that's actually, and they've, they've also put a big marketing push behind it. That's one thing I noticed today. They have just went, like, because obviously Endwalker's coming up soon. And you'd think you'd put all of your eggs into the most profitable Final Fantasy game. But you go to the Square Enix Twitter account and it's all Guardians the whole way down. In fairness, I feel like they're hitting slightly different markets. Th yeah, like, <laughs> they, cer they certainly are. But it's the idea of they are putting so many of their eggs into this basket that it shows that they're actually kind of courageous behind it. They're going, no, we actually have faith in this. And it's, it almost feels to me like, especially because Eidos Montreal and Crystal Dynamics are fairly close as far as studios go, as far as I'm aware, like at least conceptually, there's very much a, hey, sorry about the adventures, here's a good one, here's kind of what we uh, want to do. So I'd be interested to see if, they, if Crystal Dynamics will learn and try to move a little bit towards this directionally, because I think the combat in this is okay. 
but it was from uh, Patrick Fortier, I think, who doesn't really have a whole bunch of, he was a senior uh, gameplay designer, doesn't have a whole bunch of combat experience, versus Avengers, who had, oh, I can't remember who it was, God of War. The, yes, God the of new War. God of War combat designer worked on that, and you could see that played really, really well at times, and this one kind of doesn't, so you can see there's, they've got all of the parts of yeah. really good video games, they just need to actually organize them, put them together, and then go, right, keep doing this keep doing this you've got the proof of the pudding right here yeah it's like look if there's multiple studios working in these and i basically know that every year there is a spider-man caliber game a guardians of the galaxy caliber game uh i mean not marvel but a you yeah. know star wars Je jedi fallen order caliber game and they're all these like you know single player high quality experiences i mean to me then that's like oh you're saying there's a bunch of you know loosely connected video games that are just really good video games with good stories and heart like Marvel's not going to pick me up via the comics. Yeah. It's not going to pick me up via the movies, to be honest. Where it could pick me up is maybe the games. Now, luckily enough for Square Enix, I'm not playing this because I'm currently playing Final Fantasy XIV. Mm -hmm. Right? Trying to get there by Endwalker. Uh, but certainly when time permits, this is just one of those games. There's, there's just always going to be 15 to 20 hours of bloody good games sitting around. And yep. if we actually take a look here at the uh, the user consensus, you know, very positive, 92%. Now, there's one thing I do want to bring up here. Remember, Steam uses a Rotten Tomatoes-like system. That means it's basically positive or negative. So it's a lot easier for something. If, you know, if something is like really, you know, a, a six and a half, seven out of 10, but everyone agrees it's that, it could be like a 90% positive on, on um, you know, on Steam. It's like if you look at, there's loads of movies and Rotten Tomatoes, there'll be an 85, there'll be a 90, but maybe there'll actually be a 70 on a Metacritic. So just beware of like how the different scoring systems work. But overall, the vast majority of people are having a positive experience with this game. Certainly is a good thing. And, you know, looking here, like I just, we took a look through the, the reviews, what people have actually you know got a chance to play it or saying, and they're bloody happy. This is just great. And then I guess it is just coming to... Square Enix in the West, and uh, they've, you know, cocked it up a lot. Perhaps now they are uh, indeed going to start doing better. Yeah, I mean, one of the things that really stood out to me uh, watching the state of play was Star Ocean. Star Ocean, is it six, uh, got announced at a state of play out of nowhere. And that's, like, that is not something I ever would have expected them to announce in a Western-focused setting. I thought that would show up at TGS. But if it's showing up, like, here in a western oriented thing it means that i think square enix are starting to almost blend their ideas a little bit because obviously final fantasy 14 is a massive like pushing towards the west as well it is a lot of marketing that's western focused so i think like they're actually kind of nailing it and not by doing the old thing which is where they used to go here's all of our japanese uh franchises and businesses we're going to work away oh yeah d shit out tomb raider i don't i don't want to look over there just do, do whatever but now it's this case of you know, they're actually paying attention and seeing it as a more unified market overall. Yeah. And the idea that Star Ocean is like could be aiming for its Tales of Arise moment, which was obviously, you know, the Tales series, Bandai Amco JRPGs, always fairly niche in the West, fairly strong in Japan. They released Tales of Arise. They don't even really like change how the game is outside of going to the action RPG element. And they just say, this is Japanese, but do you want it? It's called Tales of Arise instead of Tales of Zesteria or, the, you know, Vesperia or whatever. A bit of a more of a reasonable name. And then broke a million sales basically immediately. Completely destroyed franchise records. Yeah. Are like, okay. It looks like they're actually, they've, they're actually looking at the West now and going, hang on. Is this an extension of a good video games market? As opposed to these weird foreigners who like Lara Croft being killed? Okay. Okay. <laughs> that might be a good move. <laughs> That's it. That's all we want in the West. We just want to see Lara Croft in various forms of distress. Yeah, absolutely. That first game was uncomfortable to watch sometimes. <laughs> it really was. Fucking hell, she, she went out in the worst ways. Yeah, no, um, I, I don't think I'll ever forget the one where you're sliding down the water and the spec just goes. Oh, yeah. That's so brutal. So brutal. Oh, man. So, hey, good video games for more people. That is what we want to see. I think this mm. is this is undoubtedly a great time to be a Marvel fan. You know, for, for the Marvel people, they, you know, they had a great campaign for Kamala. They didn't have the rest being great with Avengers. They've had a rocky enough road with, you know, with video games. Probably haven't as many, I mean, say Warhammer fans, they've also had a rocky road for video mm -hmm. games. But at least they've had like a few hits like Vermintide and a few niche yeah. games that have been really appreciated. 
but you know, Marvel, it's like there was just a big, there wasn't much going on, and there were some ropey things, and you know, it was more mobile games and stuff. And now it seems like they're actually getting getting things they want, which is uh, which is nice. <laughs> then Insomniac showed up. Yeah, Insomniac showed up. So yeah, uh, there you go. Guardians of the Galaxy yeah. seems like it's a really good game. Yeah, actually, there's one oh. little thing I want to bring up. Oh, uh-huh. uh, and this I'm not saying any sort of it's a statement to this, but it is interesting that Idos Montreal permanently shifted to a four day working week quite yes, recently yes you're right so it'll be interesting for a lot of these places to look and say oh you made a good you made a pretty good game and you didn't work yourselves into oblivion shit should we maybe think about this before we release bullshit everywhere else yeah it's like obviously things have got to uh you know they've got to be tailored to what makes sense for like you know each different type of production yeah. but uh the just the whole idea of reducing hours to increase efficiency mm-hmm. it's very interesting Yep. Um, and I think if, if if it can be achieved, it should be achieved wherever possible. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, there we go. Right. That's uh, that's it. Good news for people who play video games. Man, we've I'm been, pretty happy about that. We've been reporting good news for video gamers quite recently. It's that's interesting. It's really weird, isn't it? Yeah. It's kind of nice. <laughs> it's kind of nice. Oh, dear. Right. Take care, everyone. We will see you next time.